The first part of our setup is going to be the steam production portion. Now remember, we're using steam production because we don't want to damage the organic material because that would actually burn and chemically change the orange zest and we would not get pure organic oil, which is what we're looking for. So we need to produce a good amount of steam at a fairly even rate and to do this we're producing the steam separately from our organic material. In order to produce the steam I need here a Florence flask, a ring, a clamp, a clamp holder, I will need a glass tube with an L bend in it, a stopper with a hole in it that will fit both in this Erlenmeyer flask and fit this glass tube, I will need a gas line, Bunsen burner, and an extra sturdy ring stand. Now these ring stands can actually be found in a couple places. Spare ring stands that just fit into the tables can be found in the organic chemistry cabinet there. And it's the spare ring stands that are sturdier that can just sit on the table and be fully adjustable can be found in that drawer that's open there. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my ring on my ring stand, tighten it up, we will just set it at a relative height for now. I'm going to set up my clamp here, I'm just getting us started. Nothing overly special, good. Let's take out my stopper, clamp onto here, just putting this in a place where you can see it, you should do this on the table. Okay, it should be tight enough that it wiggles just a little bit, but I can hold it just by the clamp without the glass falling. This is not going to be the only thing holding it. We have it held in two places so that it can be secure. So now I need to loosen this so you can see this is floating. This can move freely, and this clamp here can move freely so that I can place this nice and gently right in that ring and then clamp both parts. So clamp it to my ring stand clamp it to my holder, and now this is nice and sturdy. Perfect. Next, the stopper with the glass. The glass tube will go in the stopper. When you're putting these in, be careful that you don't have to push too hard. If I push too hard, I can easily break this glass. If I, if I push too hard into this, this glass could break and go into my hand. So I'm very careful about how I'm putting this on. We also will have Vaseline in the lab so that you can use that to lubricate this so that it won't be as difficult to go on. Some of these stoppers are loose enough that it'll just push right in there. When you're pushing it on, you should actually hold it here so that you can kind of spread the stopper apart like so, so that as it's going in, the stopper spreads open and allows it to move. There we go. Perfect. Now this stopper goes in here. Once it's in, the, the, just the sheer fact of the stopper being in the glass will hold this tube in place. It'll be nice and firm. None of this is moving around too much. Okay. Then gas line obviously goes onto our gas line. Our Bunsen burner will be set up like so. I'm going to put it on the other one just for uh, the convenience of the gas line being able to move around. And we want to make sure that this is all at a decent height. My Bunsen burner is probably going to have to fit between these, so I'm actually going to move my ring. I'm moving all of this before I've got the flame on. Okay. And that should be a decent height. So that's all set up and ready to go. Let's look at the Florence flask that will be containing our organic material. All right, here's our setup with our organic material. We're going to need another Florence flask, another clamp, another clamp holder, another rubber stopper, another L-shaped tube. This one should be shorter. And a nice long glass tube. We'll look at how this should be placed in just a moment. We'll also need our hot plate. Now, this rubber stopper is a little different than the other one. You can see it has two holes here, right there, and then it's got a third hole. I don't know if you can see this in the video, but it's got a third hole that's actually been cut into it to make room for our temperature probe. 
Now, if you can't find one of these that has this third line cut in it, let me know and I will cut one for you. Just continue uh, setting up the rest of the lab while you're waiting for me. The hot plate here has, these are very useful, it has both a magnetic stirring function and a automatic temperature setting. These will get it up to a decent temperature so that we're not flooding our organic material with steam because if, if we try to just use the steam to heat this up, then that steam is going to cool down, it's going to condense, and we're actually going to fill this up with too much water. So we're going to preheat this using the hot plate. It'll be set on here, and we're going to heat it to 90 degrees. So this will get set to 90 degrees once this is all set up and everything's ready to go. I'll remind you of that later. So, Florence flask, clamp holder, and clamp. So we're going to set this up first. So I get this all ready to go. Just rough draft. I place this on. Clearly that's too far away. We're going to move this back in. I'm going to set my Florence flask on top of here. I'm just getting the placement of all of this ready to go. Okay, and that's a good height. That's going to hold it nice and steady on the middle of the hot plate. This should all be screwed in. Oh, that's actually, that needs to be a little tighter. Okay. We don't want this to be able to wiggle around too much because it's very possible for this to get bumped. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want this to be able to fall off and break open when lose all of our material. Okay, now that this is on here nice and sturdy, I'm going to put the rubber stopper in with the glass tubing. Now notice, this rubber stopper has those three holes. One is going to be for my nice long glass tube, one is going to be for my short little guy, and one is going to be for the temperature probe of the hot plate. So I can keep that at a nice even temperature. So as I'm putting the long glass tube in, I'm going to be careful with how I place this. I'm going to be careful with how I put this in. Make sure you use some lubricant to get this on so that we don't accidentally break it and hurt your hand. Where we want to place this tube is about a centimeter and a half, 1.5 centimeters off the floor of this Florence flask. You probably can't see inside the Florence flask because of the glare, but one and a half centimeters is about yay distance, about that much. We don't want it too close because otherwise, if it's sitting on the floor of the flask, pressure is going to build up right at that point and this glass could shatter or it could break off and we could get some damaged equipment. Worse, some steam could blast off somewhere and hurt somebody. And if it's just too close, if it's just barely off the floor there, the steam can escape, but as it escapes, it makes this really high-pitched, obnoxious sound, and I don't want to have to deal with that. So don't do that. Make sure it's a good distance off. We don't want it too high. It should be in the organic material, seated in there properly. So we're going to make sure that we have it placed correctly with the cork. So it should be there. So I'm going to place it through my cork, just pushing that through, just like I did before. Make sure you're using some lubrication. I'm reminding you of that because it can be very easy for these to get stuck and then try and push and it shatters and the glass goes into your hand. So we're going to use lubrication to make sure it's nice and easy. Don't want anyone to get hurt. So I check this by putting the rubber stopper in just gently. I don't need to push it down really hard. And I can see that I'm way too high. So I'm going to pull it out to adjust it. Make sure you pull this out to adjust it because if you have it in there, the flask will be squeezing the sides of that tube and it won't want to budge. And then it'll be really easy to break. So we pull it out so it's loose, then we adjust it a little bit, and we're just really guessing and checking here, okay? So that looks like a good height. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it out, and now I'm gonna put in my temperature probe. Temperature probe goes in the small hole, just like with the long flask. I'm just putting this close to it. It should be a similar distance down in there. And then I'm gonna put my small bit, Right in there. That'll go in nice and steady. That should only stick out a little bit out, the, out of the bottom of the rubber tube, or of the rubber stopper. The reason for that is we really want the steam to come up and go through this tube and collect here. So we've got it at the top so that as the steam comes to the top of the Florence flask, it'll move through here. Otherwise, we could get steam just caught up in here and not really moving all the way through. So this is just to allow it to move all the way. So. All of our tubing and temperature probe are in our cork, so we're going to put everything in, just to make sure everything's lined up. And notice, 
the cord for my temperature probe is hanging away from the hot plate. I do not want this sitting on the hot plate. If this is on the hot plate, it will burn and it will get damaged. So make sure that this is sitting away from the hot plate. Okay? So that's a good setup and we're ready to look at the condenser. For the condenser, we'll want the condenser itself. This is a double walled condenser so that fluid can flow up, cold water can flow up through one section while gas flows into the other and gets condensed down into a liquid, hence the name condenser. We want two rubber tubes, one nice and long, one of a medium length. You'll need to figure these out for yourself. There's plenty of tubing. If there isn't one that's the right length, you can just find a longer one and cut it. We'll need another uh, clamp and clamp holder. We'll need a thousand milliliter beaker. This is where we'll be collecting our distillate. And we will need an extra ring stand. So this is of the type that'll just fit into our table here. So let's just set that like, like so. There, nothing to it. The clamp will be the only thing holding the condenser up. So let's get that going. The condenser itself will need some adjusting as you put it together, as you put all of this together. So for now, we're just going to set it up at a diagonal angle. Let's move our beaker out of the way. We're going to attach our tubes to it. So my shorter tube will go on my inlet port. This is my inlet. You can tell it's, this is the side that the gas comes out. So this is the side the cold water goes in. So we want the coldest water at the front. And so this is just going to fit on, it really only needs to go on one of these little notches. It doesn't need to go on super hard. And then my longer tube will fit on my outlet port. And this will just be going to the drain. So I'm fitting this on. Notice it's just on one notch. We're not going to be putting enough water pressure through this to really, uh, push these off. So now let's connect it to my clamp and connect it to my water. So condenser goes right into this clamp like this, clamps down and just make sure that it's not going to wiggle around either way. This rubber hose goes onto the mouth of this nozzle. Your outlet should have one on it. If it doesn't, let me know, and I will install that for you. Just go ahead and set up the rest of your lab while you're waiting. Then this one can just get set in the sink. Now, when you set it in the sink, make sure that it's uh, pointed towards the drain. And it's a good idea to keep the mouth of this underneath the other parts of the hose so that any water that moves through doesn't just cause it to fly out of the sink. So let's go ahead and turn that on, make sure everything's running properly. You just want a little bit of water flowing through that. We don't need to blast this thing. I can see that I've got a decent amount of water coming out of here. It's not much, it's just barely a trickle. I might want a little bit more than that. So there we go. That's a good amount. This should not be flying all over the place. I should not be getting water everywhere. Just enough that water is flowing through here. We aren't cooking at super high temperatures here. So just so you can see what it looks like, if I keep pushing more and more and more, eventually my pressure gets too high and my hose will break off. That's why we want to keep a low amount of water on this. So there we go. I'm not going to turn it back on now, but once this is set up, my thousand milliliter beaker will sit right under this nozzle and it will drip right into here. So next, let's go ahead and look at how we put these three parts together. Now here I have all three parts individually set up and ready to go, but now I need to line them all up with each other. Now the easiest one to move around is actually going to be this middle part. So I'm going to kind of meet this one to the other two. Right now I can see my heights between these two are kind of off. I don't like that. I want these heights to be very similar. So I'm actually going to be adjusting this to go up a little higher. I do that using the clamp holder. I'm going to move them so they're just about the same height. There we go. I'm going to move the ring up to rest under it. I'm not quite rest on the ring, so let's...
There we go. That's nice and sturdy. So now my inlet and outlet are at the same height. That'll be important so that I don't get any kinks in my chain. Next, let's get the condenser aligned with this. So for the condenser, I'm just going to have a straight glass rod and a rubber stopper, just like the one over on my steam production. And it's just going to fit in there like so. Now this is going to be generally adjustable. So I'm just going to move these to try and get a decent alignment. It doesn't need to be exact. I am going to tilt this down a little bit more. Bring it back up. Okay. So then, once my heights are all good, next I need to put some rubber hoses on these. And for these, I'm just going to use these little yellow rubber hoses. These will be the ones that fit onto the glass tubes nice and simply. They're in the cabinet with all the other tubing. All we do is take this, and you might need to cut one to a custom length. That's totally fine. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to be moving them on to the proper glass tubing. All right. Now when steam comes up through here, it'll go out through this shallow, the smaller of the two glass tubes. It will move out through here and it will move into the condenser. Next, rubber tubing on the steam production. Now I'm going to take my rubber tube. I have these spaced a decent ways apart. I'm going to place the rubber tubing onto the mouth of both of these. Remember that my steam production is going to my longer glass tube that's going all the way down into here. Now this is even a bit long. My ideal would be having these pointed straight at each other. So I'm going to take this off and trim it. There we go. Now my steam can flow nice and straight. Everything looks good to go. Everything's set up and ready to start. So my next step will be to fill this with my organic material and to fill this halfway with water. All right, I have my Florence flask filled up with about halfway full of water. I've put about 350 milliliters in there. I can just put my rubber stopper on top. I've got my Florence flask with my orange slurry here. This has a lot more water in it than yours will. I had this frozen from a few months ago, so that's where all the excess water came from. But I'm just going to put it on like so. Stick it in there. Get everything clamped down. Before I start, I want to make sure everything is sturdy. Everything is in the proper position. All of my tubes are straight and lined up. I don't have any kinks in any tubes. I have nowhere that steam could get caught and trapped. My steam production is sturdy. It's not going to get knocked over just by accidentally bumping it. None of this is going to break or fall or get knocked over or anything. So, first thing, we're going to turn on our condenser by turning on our water line just gently, a gentle flow. Okay. There we go. That's good. Next, I'm going to start my Bunsen burner. It's important that I start my Bunsen burner before I turn on my hot plate, because if this heats up, the pressure between this flask and this flask will go up. That will cause the orange slurry to flow back into my steam production, which is gross and will make an annoying smell. So let's turn on our Bunsen burner. We're going to light it away from my steam production. All right, now we've got that. Next, I'm going to turn on my hot plate. I'm going to turn on my heating, and I'm going to set my temperature to 90 degrees. And now I'm just going to monitor the setup, take a look at how things get started. As this starts to boil, you're going to likely see a lot of movement in here. You're going to see this bubble up and kind of burst up. Make sure that your corks are all on solid. And as this starts to boil, I highly recommend 
bringing the flame down to give it a gentle boil. Once we get going, you'll start to see condensation on the inside of this tube. You might see a milkier substance. That would be the orange oil that is produced. Otherwise, mostly this setup will take care of itself. So while you're waiting on it, you should be looking at other homework. You should be reviewing your IUPAC naming structures and letting this run its course. Just keeping an eye on this water level and how vigorously it's boiling.